بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله my dear brothers and sisters in Islam uh, just um, a very interesting topic defending the character of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم a very relevant topic um, and I think it's going to become increasingly more relevant as t- uh, 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 as time goes by because um, you can't you can't damage the message then let's try damaging the message and that's how I think that been a pro- the approach of quite a few people uh, let's uh, stick with etiquette our traditions say that when we hear the name of the Prophet ﷺ, we say peace be upon him um, it is uh, an order, according to many scholars, it's an obligation, so if we can, can keep to that as well, please, inshallah. Um, the first is, as I said before, one way to damage the message is to damage the messenger. What's to say, um, do, uh, he's a mere messenger, but shooting the messenger down. And I want to say also that there is evil, what I call evil, within, because people on this topic of defending the Prophet actually uh, maliciously uh, use their angst and actually verbally tell Muslims I'm talking about, verbally say to the wider Muslim community that we here, we love the Prophet and we're acting in defense of the honor of the Prophet Well, actually they're not. They know full well they're actually acting to vent their own particular personality or their own particular take on something, the aggressiveness in their nature, whatever it is, they're not submitting their anger to the Sharia of Allah. They're actually following their desire. And their desire is to cause angst, cause problems, is to cause and use this as a platform for doing so. And I've genuinely come across people who have done stupid things in the name of uh, uh, defending the honor of the Prophet And when you sat down with them, and I've tried to explain, well, actually, you know what you've done is counterproductive or this and that, there's no listening. Uh, it's as if they're in a different world. They don't want to hear. And a Muslim is one who submits his or her will to the will of the Creator. Okay? The second is the evil without, because there's no doubt about that either. If you look at some of the articles, newspaper clippings, etc. about the Prophet you will see that there's a malicious, deliberate and malicious attempt to malign him, which goes beyond reason. So it's actually, it is evil. So both there is evil within and there is evil without. Accusations of the past. During the time of the Prophet of course, there were many charges leveled against him. Uh, he was accused of being the author of the Qur'an, it was an invention, he was a poet, possessed, he, is, uh, uh, he was claimed to be a soothsayer, a magician. Uh, it's said that he had acquired the, the uh, information in the Qur'an during his travels. They said that there was a Christian boy who was telling him things. It was a ramblings of a madman. So if you read Sirah, you'll come across all this. It's in the Qur'an as well. So it's nothing new. And poets were hired by the Qureshi tribe of old to malign him, disgustingly often, because it was one of the ways that you could try and damage the message. How does the present look? Well, there are many books and articles now written against him. Certainly in 1987-88, when I got interested in Islam, there were very few. And every year you'll see more and more come. And especially after September the 11th, when the interest in Islam grew hugely, now if you go into any bookshop, you'll find maybe half of the books at least are negative. Many books are against uh, the Prophet ﷺ, if not against Islam itself. Now, when you look at the books and you analyze them, those books that are based on hearsay, I mean, it's, it's not worth them. Really, they're just there for maligning. They're not interested in dialogue. They're not interested in honesty and transparency. I have at home a small cartoon strip 
I should have bought it actually. Uh, I don't know if any of you have seen it. It's done by the Christian Evangelical uh, Organization in America. Millions were produced. I have an example of it. And it's a cartoon strip of the Prophet But it's done from a Protestant evangelical perspective. And in this cartoon, a man, a Muslim man, we think he's Muslim, comes back to his village, gathers all the people together, and he said, I have something to tell you which is of grave importance. And then he says, many years ago, the devil started to see how it could pervert the truth. And so the devil created the Pope. And the Vatican was an offshoot of the devil to try and get people away from the truth. So you can understand straight away is Protestant versus, uh, well, extreme Protestant versus the Catholic. So the Pope is an uh, embodiment of the devil. But then it carries on, it gets more sinister. Um, I should have bought it so you can have a look at it. It's quite interesting and disgusting. Uh, he says, uh, uh, the cartoon says, the Pope then, there you see a picture of the Vatican and so on. The Pope then, in about the 5th century, had a meeting with his cardinals. And he said, we've tried everything, but we need a new weapon. Why don't we invent a religion? So he tasked, they found a, a nun, a pure nun from one of the convents, and they tasked her with the mission, go to Arabia, settle down there, take your time and see if you can pick a vulnerable young man and convince him he's a prophet. This nun's name was Khadija. And so she did that, she went out, she actually married him and then she fed him bits, he declared himself a prophet. So he's telling all this, and of course, right at the end, in similar fashion to many of the Muslim books about dialogue, all the people in the village say, oh my goodness, we believe now. And just like Muslim dialogue books at the end, the person, the Christian goes, Shadun la ilaha illa wa shadun Muhammad Rasulullah. But this is nonsense. It's based on hearsay. When I was doing my master's, we came across a book about Islam, done by a reputable, or so-called reputable, uh, lecturer in uh, Cambridge, Univer Oxford University, uh, uh, Patricia Crone, and Dr. Patricia Crone. The book's title was not Islam, it was called Hagarism. And it was based on the fact that the, her premise in here was that Islam actually, Muhammad really, the, the whole concept of Islam didn't really start with him, it actually started with Umar Radi, uh, Radi Allah, who later on, and then it was transposed back. These books, it's easy, you can knock them back. Even my lecturer, who was a, a, a priest, he said it was just a nonsense. The next set of books, which are based on Muslim sources, and when you come across these books, the first thing to check is hadith. Because I can pick you up hadith books and I can make a real solid case against Islam. Very easy to do, using fabricated hadith. And so the next thing that you have to check with these books is, are the hadith authentic? Are hadith that you use, are they authentic? Uh, is it true, what's happened? And if they're ba based on fabricated weak narration, again, you put it towards that. It's easy to knock that. It's the third attack, as it were, that causes consternation and requires more work. These are books and articles written by Muslims, ex-Muslims in some cases, uh, by non-Muslims in, in many cases, which are based on authentic sources. Hadith from Bukhari and Muslim, etc. And these need contextualization. They need to be understood in the context of the time. We need to understand how they were thought of at the time, which verses came abrogated or non-abrogated. So we need to understand, and that requires a deeper argument. First two is easy to knock out. And I've put here six different attacks, if you like, on the person of the Prophet. The marriage to Aisha, her age at the time of marriage. Uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, having many wives. The marriage to Zainab, and how that took, a pla it took place. The punishment of Banu Qurayza, the Jewish tribe. The punishment that was meted out to them. 
the charge of warmongering that 